Now, 1 Thessalonians, and that is uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse number 3. And uh, just so great to hear about answered prayer. Thank you for sharing. We've been praying for months and months about a number of uh, matters here. And what to hear you say that the prayers are being answered. Oh, that's just so uh, encouraging. And so we'll just uh, keep on praying. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 3, and I'll read through verse number 8. Um, That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and uh, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. We, the child of God, we are appointed. And who set that appointment? Who makes those appointments? God makes those appointments. And we are appointed uh, unto afflictions. Afflictions, wow. Uh, for verily, uh, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation. We told you. Um, already this message is not sounding like an ear tickler. You know, this is, this is already sounding like maybe it's not a make me feel good. Uh, this is already getting serious and sobering. <laughs> um, we told you before that we should suffer. Uh, you know, suffer, what is that? Uh, it's when you're not in your comfort zone when you're in your uncomfortable zone. Even as it came to pass, and ye know, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. You know, uh, the hardest steel has been through the hottest fire. The purest ore has been through the hottest fire. And the most beautiful diamonds have been through the greatest pressure. Think about that. This word tribulation that we looked at, the Greek word is Thalibo, and here it is defined, to press hard upon. And in the Bible, when you come upon passages about uh, the grape and the olive press to, abstain, to extract the juice and the oil, when you see those passages that speak about pressing the grapes and the, oil, uh, the olives, guess what the Greek word is? It's thalibo, to press hard upon. And uh, so uh, 
Paul was concerned that they had uh, given up, that they were quitting. They had gone back, left Christ, gone back into the world. And uh, so he sent to know your faith. Yeah. You still believing? Have you kept the faith? Um, and of course, uh, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you. So we see what the, the tempter's up to. He, he, he wants to, um, he wants to uh, destroy that faith. And that's, what's he, that's what he is working to do. Verse 6, but now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith, they kept the faith. Not only did they keep the faith through all of the crushing uh, tribulations, yeah, but they were still... Uh, loving, charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. That's the way it should be. We ought to desire to see one another as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And be glad whenever God makes it possible for us to uh, gather together. And uh, in Jesus' name, and to uh, enjoy fellowship, and it's all because of uh, our Savior. Uh, verse number 8, for now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. If we stand fast, fast in the Lord. I'll need to borrow your, uh, that text, Mrs. Ellis, on your phone you sent me this morning. Um, whenever uh, I can get that from you. So the question is, uh, why tribulation? Why pressure? Why does God allow, why does God press hard? Sometimes God allows the devil to press hard. Why tribulation? What's that all about? Second Corinthians answers that. I'd like you to see it. Second Corinthians chapter. Oh, thank you. And it's all queued up there. All right. Um, at second. Uh, 2 Corinthians, I uh, hope that's what I said, Corinthians uh, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Um, well, you know, what, what is God up to? Why, why, uh, why doesn't he just um, make it pleasant, easy, nice, comfortable? What is God um, doing by allowing pressure? What is, what is it he wants that he accomplishes or even uses the devil to accomplish or the world? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7. Um, but we have this treasure, and where do we have this treasure, class? Where is the treasure? We have this treasure in, well, earthen vessels. Earthen vessels, what's that? What's an earthen vessel? Well, what, what did God make our, our uh, bodies out of? Earth, earthen yeah, dust. Now this treasure, that's, that's what I'm looking at. What treasure? What, what treasure? Now remember, this is written to believers, the church. 
Okay, so um, that helps us to understand what treasure is within these earthen vessels. What might that treasure? Well, you know, let's let the Bible answer that question. Um, now, look what look what the uh, look what the uh, brother. Uh, uh, verse 8, uh, look, look at uh, their life, their ministry. Um, they have this treasure within. Okay. We are troubled on how many sides? <laughs> I, I don't want trouble. Do you want trouble? Do you like trouble? Uh, you know, Alvin, uh, down downtown. I would. I'll tell you what. Uh, that was an experience. <laughs> you know, I don't know. We were down in some big city building. I, I felt like an ant. I felt like an ant that could be squished. You know, get in that room with all of those officials, and uh, they, you know, they had everything going their way. Um, and then, uh, when, uh, I left, um, I couldn't figure out how to do the parking meter. You know, they said to me, they said, uh, now what, you, you know, so I walked back in I said, and they said, well, what you got to do is get the number off your parking space. And then you go over to the parking meter and you, uh, take your card and you pay for your, your space number. And that's how they know that you paid. Went back out. I mean, I was stooping high and low, almost on my knees looking under that vehicle, trying to find the number in that parking space. I mean, I spent five minutes walking around that vehicle, hunting and, you know, walked over to that machine. I couldn't even see anything on the... Uh, Screen because of the sun. I couldn't see anything. I walked back over again, back in there, and they had the two security guards, three security guards. And I said, uh, I just told them, I said, they don't let me out much, folks. I just told them, I don't get into the big city very much, you know. You know? And I said, uh, uh, I said, I can't find a number anywhere. And I don't know how to run those machines, and I can't see the machine. And they said, and then they said, uh, "Well, is there a ticket on your car? Did you get a ticket on your car?" I said, "A ticket on my car?" They said, "Well, yeah." They, you know, they said, "See, I'm learning as I go." They said, "Yeah, when you pulled in, you were supposed to go get a uh, ticket. You're supposed to go get a uh, parking, you know, and stick it in your car." And uh, I said, I didn't even know that. So they don't let me out much. And uh, that's what I said to them. And I said, well, if it, they said, did you, see a did you see a ticket from a police officer on your vehicle? I said, no, I didn't see anything on my vehicle. He said, well, hurry up, go get in your vehicle and get out of there before they ticket you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean... Trouble, amen, trouble. Uh, yeah, I was in that meeting with Brother Alvin, and boy, I'm telling you what. I had the high city officials there coming down. It was crushing, you know, and boy, I mean, and uh, but now this evening, we just put prayer to it, and you heard Alvin's testimonial. It, it went well. He said it went well. I look forward to being in that house. And uh, praise be to God. Um, we are troubled on every side, uh, yet not distressed. You know, um, distressed it would, uh, you know, would mean losing faith and losing hope and um, no. We're troubled, but yet not distressed. We are perplexed, 
but not in despair. Despair, you know, uh, defeated. Uh, and he goes on and he says, persecuted, persecuted, but not forsaken. Because remember what Jesus promised? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you're troubled. Maybe you're, per you know, perplexed. Perplexed is, uh, uh, I don't know how, I don't know how this is gonna, how this is gonna happen. There, there's no way this can happen. I mean, this isn't even possible. There's no way this can work out. You know, you're perplexed. But not in despair. You know why you're not in despair? Because God is faithful. And not only does the Bible say God is faithful, the Bible says God is able. And the Bible says he will do it. I mean, but look, here's the picture. It's a word picture. I mean... <laughs> This is anything but comfort. This is not nice. This is certainly not pleasant. Troubled on every side, you know. Well, I, it doesn't matter what direction I turn. All, all I've got are problems and troubles and impossibilities and uh, persecuted. People aren't nice to me once they find out. I believe in Jesus Christ. And uh, persecuted. Uh, wow. <laughs> cast down. Cast down. He goes on to say. Cast down. Get knocked down. Get knocked down. In the battle. But, uh, but not destroyed. Somebody said, if you go down, go down fighting. Getting, getting cast down. But, but not destroyed. Now, this is Ellis, let's see. Oh, it went off. Now what do I do? She won't tell me her code numbers. She has special code numbers. You don't know it. Are you kidding me? You don't know your. Okay. <laughs> this is the testimony of God's men servants two thousand years ago. Here's a more recent testimonial. Listen to this. This man was born in 1809. That's a little closer to home. In 1816. At age seven, he was forced to work because his family was expelled. Now, I, that's all the information I have. I, I don't have any more detail. Expelled, you know. Uh, in, eight, in 1818, he lost his mother. In 1828, he lost his sister. In 1831, he opened his first business and went bankrupt. In 1832, he stood in the legislative elections and lost. In 1833, he borrowed money to open another business and went bankrupt again. In 1835, he met a wonderful woman. He falls in love with her. They get engaged. And before they could get married, she died. In 1836, he entered a dark period in his life, deep depression. You thought that was a modern phenomenon. He went into deep depression. He remains bedridden for six consecutive months. But he gets up. But he gets up. 
He gets up in that same year of 1836. He runs in the legislative elections and loses again. In 1840, he presented himself as an elector. Now, I'm thinking that would be the Electoral College, and he loses. In 1842, he met the woman he would end his life with, and they fall in love, get engaged, get married, and she gives him four children, and they lose three of them to the grave. In 1843, he appeared at Congress and lost. In 1845, he appeared again at Congress and lost again. In 1850, his son died. In 1854, he ran for Senate and lost. In 1856, he ran for vice president. He didn't even get 100 votes. In 1858, he ran again for the Senate and lost again. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected president of the United States of America. He was elected for two exceptional terms. He was assassinated in the beginning of the second term. He is one of the most respected and impactful presidents in the history of these United States of America. Uh, perseverance. Perseverance. Through it all. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men, but God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you, that you're able, but with the temptation, make a way uh, of escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So, uh, let's go back to this passage in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, Um, I think it's reasonable uh, to say that God allowed Abraham Lincoln to, to be pressed hard upon, to uh, come under the uh, tribulation press, so to speak. Whoa. Why all the pressure? Why all the tribulation? What is God? I mean, um, what is he doing? Well, you look in there, uh, verse 10, always bearing about in the, in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that that the what? That the life also of whom? The life of whom? Jesus might be made manifest where? Are you getting this? Did you catch what God just told you as being his answer? for why he allows all of the crushing pressure to come upon his children. It's, it's, he wants us to die, right? Isn't that what Paul said? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but... Christ liveth in me. 
And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. While this, while this crushing pressure, it's... What is God doing? He, well, folks, um, well, let God speak for himself. Uh, uh, verse 10, um, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus, the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, verse 11, for we which live are always, always delivered unto what? We're always delivered unto death for whose sake? For Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be what class? Might be made manifest in where? In our mortal flesh. So why, why the crushing, the crushing pressures? Why does God allow that to come upon his children? Well, it, it literally gets us out of his way so that Jesus can live his life through us. I mean, not this is not a feel good. This is not a, oh, I feel so good. <laughs> I came to church tonight. I just feel so great. I found out God is allowing me to be crushed. Oh, I can't tell you how good that makes me feel. That's a real happy, happy, happy. Um, you came to a Bible preaching church is what you came to. And I, you know... Um, wow. Uh, so verse 12, he continues and he says, so then what worketh in us? <laughs> wow. But life in you. But life in you. Uh, I mean, what is God doing? What is God doing? Well, that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. And I can't fill in the blanks. I don't have the details. That's his business. That's his work. Uh, he does what he does, when he does it, where he does it, how he does it. Um, but, but when he's done, but when he's done, uh, it's, it's going to be Jesus. It's going to be Jesus. Living in us and out of us and through us. It's going to be Jesus. Um, now, let's um, let's go to let's let's go to Matthew chapter five, please. Matt, you know, I mean, uh, so we think about Abraham Lincoln. You talk about. And he, and he uh, by the way, by his own testimony, is a child of God. He's a, he's a brother in Christ. Uh, yeah, but he was crushed. He was crushed. He was in uh, the press. Uh, crushed by the pressure. But you know what? He, he never quit. He never quit. Um, and uh, now, now, Matthew chapter 5 and uh, 
you know, in verse uh, 14, and I'm going to read through verse 16 of Matthew chapter 5. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, and stop and think about this. If he had quit, if he had quit and given up, um, I, I don't think I would have read the last paragraph. Uh, I don't think he would have become the president if he had quit and given up. Uh, everything prior to was preparatory. God getting him ready for the work that God had for him to do. And uh, so, uh, you thinking of, uh, you know, quitting, giving up? You thinking of throwing the towel in? You think, think of crying uncle? <laughs> Better think again. Uh, you know, God has great plans for you. Um, but to realize those plans, uh, quitting on God, giving up, that's just not, that's not an option. If, uh, if you want um, to uh, come to the, the realization of the great plans God has for you, look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14. Matthew 5, 14. Uh, here it is. Now watch this. You're the light of the world... A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now watch, verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh, this light, let's, what about this light? John 8 and verse 12. John 8 and verse 12. Then Jesus spake unto them, saying, What did he say? I am the what class? I am the light. I am the light of the world. Now, um, so going back to the question at the beginning of the lesson, uh, we have this treasure where? In, means inside. And uh, talk to me about the treasure. The treasure is, the treasure is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the treasure. And where is he? He's inside. He's inside. Now what did Jesus just teach us our natural inclination is to do with regard to the light that is inside? I just read it. Uh, verse 15. Uh, Matthew, remember? Matthew 5. Neither do men light a candle and put it where? Under a bushel. Okay. Um, what do we do with the treasure within? What do we do with that light? The Bible tells us. Look at John, John chapter 7, verse 13. Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John 7. And we do this, it's our natural, it's our, uh, it's what we do with the light. Um, John seven thirteen, uh, John seven seven thirteen. Howbeit, no man spake openly of him. And why would they not speak openly uh, about Jesus? Fear. So we we have this treasure within this light within. But, but God doesn't want a bushel put over that light. He wants that light on display. But for fear, they were keeping the bushel over the light. But look at there, John 12 and verse 42. John 12 and verse number 42. Uh, John 12, 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. Many. Now, 
believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not do what? They, they put a bushel over the light, over the treasure within. They, they covered it. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. John 19 and verse 38. John 19 and verse 38. Um, it, it, John 19. So see, see what was happening 2,000 years ago is not so unlike what is happening uh, today. There's, an earth, there's a treasure within these earthen vessels. There's a light within. Now look at John 19 and verse number 38. Uh, and after this, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but, but what? Oh, secret, secretly. He's, and, and hence the term secret saint. He's one of the secret saints. Uh, the, the bushel is over the light. He's got it covered. Oh, the, Jesus is in there. The light is in there. Just that, you know, then and today, uh, the natural inclination is to keep it covered. Why? Why this press? The word tribulation um, comes from the Greek word philebo. And uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a reference to the grape and the olive presses that were used 2,000 years ago. What, what's inside of the grape? What's inside of the olive? And what, and what is required to, to get what is inside of, the, of those out of them? Oh. Huh? Pressure. Pressure. I mean, it's like, you know, and this is a very simple illustration. <clears throat> you, go, you go to some sink on some morning, right? If you don't forget. If you don't forget, it's like, you know, it's like, wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I forgot to brush my teeth yesterday. Wow. You don't go to the sink with a tube of toothpaste and, and you know, it's, wow, look at that tube. That's a good looking tube. I like the colors of that tube. Whoa, I like the name on, on the tube. Wow, oh, you know, that's great. But what's, what you want and what will do you some good is not on the, uh, the outside. Where is it? It's on the inside. And what do you have to do to get what's on the inside out so it'll do you some good? You, you, pre you put pressure to it. And as you put pressure to it, as you put pressure to it, I mean... You know, that tube just doesn't look that good anymore, does it? The tube, the tube has changed. The look, the feel of the tube. But, but you know what is happening? It's doing some good now. It's doing some good. You know, listen, make no mistake about it. You have this treasure in earthen vessels. And our natural tendency, the tendency of our fallen nature is to keep a bushel basket over it, to cover it up. Why? So we can fit in with others. They didn't want to be kicked out of the synagogue so they could fit in. Uh, so because they're afraid, they were afraid. You know, which is usually the reason we're afraid. See, you know, and so um, Paul told him, he said to the church at Thessalonica, we told you, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer tribulation. We told you. And 
And so what we need to understand is God is going to work in the lives of his people, his children. Because what is needful and what will do good is on the inside. And our, we have it covered, covered up. And, and so God's going to allow tribulation, which is the olive press, the wine press. Now let me tell you, uh, um, it's, it's going to change us. It's going to change us. When, when that pressure, you know, um, but it's going to change us for the better. It's going to change us for the better. Um, what are you saying? What are you saying? God's purpose for your life is not since Jesus came in. God's purpose for your life is not that you should be on display. You know what God's purpose is? When Jesus came in, do you know what you became? You became a candlestick to put him on, to put the light on display. It's crushing. It's crushing. Um, and you know what? This is, uh, this is uh, the Word of God. And, um, but I want you to, let's close it, let's close it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, verse number 13. Um, and that, that, let me tell you, let me say this. You cannot get yourself, you cannot get yourself to the place where God wants you to be. Because it's not a work of the flesh. It's a work of the Holy Spirit of God. And only God can get you where he wants you to be. And, uh, wow. Huh. Look at this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, here it is. Uh, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Now, you look at this. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God knows. God knows how much. God knows. But will with the temptation, uh, this is, you know, trials, yeah, tribulation, uh, also make a way to escape that ye, that ye may be able to bear it. Um, you know, so, um, you know, <sighs> All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. God is working. God is working on you, child of God, and God is working on me. God is working on this church. And uh, so... Um, and he will finish. He will finish. He will finish. He'll do it his way. He'll do it in his time. He'll do it how he pleases to do it. But he will get the work finished. All right. Father, uh, it's really, it, I, I don't feel good preaching this, um, and uh, 
probably doesn't make people feel good hearing it, but, you know, Lord, um, it is what you do. And you know what, Lord, uh, you don't do anything in our lives other than because you love us. And uh, so, Lord, help us to trust you. Just help us to believe you as you're working uh, in us, on us, and through us. And to know that when your work is finished, um, Christ, Christ will be seen. God bless your word, we pray.